This is the J.R. Hendrick Texan Gentleman podcast that deals with the early in life of my alter ego, J.R. Hendrick. This episode is in a narrated format, commentary by myself and J.R. Relax and enjoy the adventure. Take care. God bless. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. J.R. and I are here. Uh, we're having an uh, iced, uh, uh, iced cocoa tea uh, a concoction that I taught uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy here how to make. Uh, Jared, go ahead and give this uh, podcast episode um, a name. It's called Kyle's Big Stupid World. <laughs> and we're going to drink this iced uh, co- cocoa tea appropriate times. Because the Hendrick household's about to get hot. Yes, it sure is. <sighs> well, shall we get down to business? Hmm? Shall we? I don't think we have any other choice. Let's go. All right. Now. Now, this is off the heels of, say, um... The Takeover episode, which is a high for JR. This is kind of a low. If if you know what I mean. This is kind of a low. Okay, so now... We get it to where... five twenty a.m. Uh, Jim is in the kitchen talking to Betsy. She informs him that Kyle and his family would be on the 705 flight to Washington, D.C. Jim was uneasy about Kyle showing up until Grandma Elizabeth walks in and said that he told her that he was very angry. And his birth father, and, and his birth father, were trying to uh, escape a guilty plea. See, in the last episode, John Dustin was arrested for uh, a minor infraction of some sorts, and they give him three months in jail at his sentence hearing you know, later on, and after the three months. A 20-year um, probation sentence. Okay. 7.30 a.m. 14 Heritage Gate. J.R. is looking over his goals for his uh, business with pictures of John F. Kennedy, Theodore Roosevelt, and Ronald Reagan on his, on his desk. You were also playing some music, weren't you? Uh, yes, I was. I was playing, uh, I'm trying to think what I was, oh, yes, of course. Got to be true about DC Talk. Meanwhile, downstairs, Betsy has, uh, the servants have plates with omelets. And she says, sorry, Jim. I have a lot to do today. 15 page uh, a business blueprint for uh, Hendrick Foods um, gives me a splitting headache. And Jim says, Hand it over to, to me, baby. I'm on a leave of absence. And she says, You're not, that's, it's like a tender moment. It's like, ah. And then she says, It's not your fault. And, and he says, I love you. And she said, what you've done is excellent. And he says, you know, I ain't been the best husband or the best father. And Betsy said, I know you've been cheating on me. Uh, every once in a while. And Jim says, maybe my perch in, in, in that ranch ain't all that good, Betsy. 
uh, you could easily throw me out if you want to. And she says, and leave my son, my blind, and our, our firstborn and blind son at the hands, at the mercy of John Dustin? I don't think so. And Jim says, honey, why don't you come over here and I'll know your big kiss on your face. Okay, so then Betsy gets, I uh, guess, a text from Kyle that he is boarding the plane, and and she says Kyle's on his way, and she says, "Well, then we can celebrate at last. We know that his rotten father." Uh, is rotten in South Carolina jail. But Kyle better not give me no lip. And she says, I'm not sure he don't give us any lip. And Betsy says, I love you, honey. I'm sorry. I say what I just said. I'm just going down to the Assemblies of Christ is to confess. And so Christine walks in, you know, into the, the kitchen. You gotta understand, the, the, the atmosphere is tender, but it's somber. Because Jim feels bad for what he said. And she walks into the dining room, um, having received the same text. And she says, Um, my favorite with jalapeno peppers, Christine said. And Bessie says, You and Kyle are sometimes just like your father, Bessie says. And she says, uh, No kidding, I'm just like dad. Uh, he's just been running around uh, with his Cheshire grin on his face, just like uh, you took over the, uh, just like you took over the world. And uh, Betsy's like, "Oh, he's got a lot going on, Christine." Um, about Jr. His internship is in six days. Speaking of which, where is he? Christine, go get him. And she's like, uh-uh. Um, you need to sit. And, um, and, and he's sitting there in silence with a, thinking about a baby dog. Why don't you go get him better or better yet? Let's... Let's have him get his lazy bones up and, and head to the table. And so, not, and then after that, uh, Jim rocks. Um, Jerry goes into the dining room. Well, I'll be, Jim says. I'm going down. I'm go, I've gone downstairs to the gym to work out. Uh, my book and uh, an office and you've been stuck in that office all morning <sighs> what you been doing getting tickets to the next Rolling Stones concert <sighs> and Betsy said Good morning, Jr. What's going on? And Jr. says, "Oh, just read uh, the Main Street Journal. Nancy Reagan's getting um, mocked for the uh, uh, mainstream press." And Christine uh, spoke up and she said, "Press your problem, Jr." I remember Daddy always telling me when I was a baby, how
how much you must you adore Dragon. And I, when I begged you to vote for George W. Bush, you, look, you voted for the Democrats. And Jim, uh, Jim sighs and, and grunts heavily. And he's like, here we go again. No wonder they want to silence me from talking to, uh, to the press. Because I'll say what I want to say. And Bessie spoke up and saying, um, Gerald trying to make it home for dinner. Kyle is coming, uh, in today. And Gerald's like, sorry, mama. Uh, I got other plans. And good morning, Christine. And, So, Christine, and Jim's like, morning, Christine. Maybe because I understand why you're so buddy buddy with Christine, but always fought with Kyle. Don't you ignore me and your, and your mama, Jim said, going at Gerald. And Gerald, and, and, okay, we're going to give Jim the bell for this one. Ding, 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 ding. And Gerald's like, All those things I've done for Daddy, I've done for you. I should go college for three years, so I could so I case politics and power, case politics and power and influence in Austin, Washington, D.C. Come on, Daddy, don't be that way. I love you. Don't make me break you, boy. And can you imagine what Betsy is going through here? I mean, the dynamics. Jim has this love-hate relationship with Kyle. And because he wants to stay on, bed, on, on, on Betsy's good side, Jerry, you say it. Well... Quite frankly, quite frankly, it's like this, okay? <laughs> Kyle has always been the bone of contention between the two. And and I always thought that uh, Mama played favorites for Kyle and, and Daddy. It may what Kyle sometimes to keep the peace. Okay, so it's 9 a.m. It's Brad's Georgetown apartment. He, he escorts Jr. Uh, to this uh, business center and into this, this private office with computer desk and refrigerator. And Brad's like, this is my personal domain, man. Dad left me $400,000. $400,000 in his will. When he died, well, I raised it up to $670,000. A bachelor's in business economics and a serious internship. And I will go off, and this fall, go off to Odessa University College for my MBA. MBA. Top of the world, uh, Brad brags. And Gerald says, you can draw by Fortin in, in his own million dollar house in Georgetown. Gerald said. And, and Brad says, hey, hold on. Remember all those times? Uh, you took me to the ranch? And I would try to talk to your sister, but she looks so so cold. Won't even talk to me. And Joe's like, "Nerd, heard, remember? 
and he says, and Jr., your mama. I gotta say, sometimes mama says she's crazy, and Jr.'s like, Bradley, I am not in the mood for your mockery. And Brad's like, come off it, Jr. Two weeks ago, you were complaining. Because this blowhard, as your dad puts it, goes to see your mother. And, and J.R. said, I didn't agree to come down here, debate for you, to be a smart aleck. Okay, Brad gets the bell here. Ding, 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 ding. And just then, J.R.'s phone starts to ring. It's Dr. Kinghorn. He says, Hendrick, I see what's going on here. Great move over there. Take on a a fine corporate food industry, Dr. Kinghorn said. And Brad says, it's nothing her, sir, Brad said. John, please don't tell me that you're a uh, uh, courting company with this Bradley Glenn. And Gerald's like, now let me tell you something. Now let me tell you. Nothing's going on today other than the corporate takeover and me hang out on at, at work. I finished Biblical Society this morning. And so Kinghorn says, all right, JR, I'm going to give you a pass. But I don't want you to start, uh, but I want you to start looking at those uh, propaganda books. Okay, so it's it's eleven oh five a.m. United Airlines uh, flight. Uh, carrying Kyle and his family uh, lands at the airport, and Jim, Betsy, Christine, and Amy Kathleen greet him. And Amy Kathleen's like Kyle. It's good to see you again. And Kyle says, Good to see you. Um, you too, uh, Kate. Kyle said. Let's just, sometimes we call her Kate. Most times I call her Amy. And Bessie, and Bessie says, Kyle! She says, rushing over to hug him. Along with Madison, Andrew, and George. Oh, you're all glad you're all back. Missed you, Mama. But I come here to see Daddy. Where's JR? Damn fool has no guts. And so Christine said he went off to hang out with Brad and some other Weird friends of his, as Christine says. And, Ka and Kyle says, uh, Mamby Pamby Mouse, better face me. And so, Jim says, Get it out of your system, you hear me? And he's gone, he says, You ain't disgracing. The family in front of God and everybody in this airport. So Thomas walked in. He says the car's reading everybody and, and Kyle's uh, and Kyle trying to get too much of a big mouth. Say nothing for yourself, Thomas. 
You can't beat the crap out of me like you did years ago. That little battle I had with JR. Um, 11 years ago. At Lake Whitney. Means nothing. And Jim says. You shut your mouth. Okay, so now, Kyle, he gets his first bell in this episode. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so it's 11.30 uh, p.m. J.R., Brad, Karen, and Marissa have lunch at Marissa's apartment. Uh, Karen is excited when she finds a Christian encyclopedia of name meanings. She asked Marissa where, where, where to find it and everything. Uh, it was an interesting dinner, and it was pork chops, green beans, and uh, fried potatoes and corn. 1 p.m. Betsy and Dr. Kinghorn meet in a virtual conference where they discuss JR's advocacy essay paper. Kinghorn said, that the takeover, company takeover, and his summer, uh, internship would put him in, in good stead. Uh, and, and Harmon said that Jagar had a sharpened mind. Okay, so 3 p.m., Jagar and Brad and Jim Bob Horton go in, they're going to Brad's apartment. They're outside talking first. All right, Jagar, I'm sorry. About what, I, about what I said this morning is very wrong. It, 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 can we agree that, that, that I shouldn't treat you like that? I'm learning to get used to it. Um... When he's ground, grounding at his, his uh, mother's home back in the day, he was ready for some teasing. I'll give that a pass, but I don't like sarcasm. Tad, Tad J.R. and Brad says, look, Tad said I shouldn't be treating people that way. So now Tad was a nickname, J.R., Tad was a nickname for uh, Daddy in Wales. And I found out through uh, some friends in 2000 that Brad's great-great-grandfather immigrated from Wales and settles in Durham, uh, in, in, uh, Davidson, Kentucky. His great great grandfather moved the family to Willow Park, Texas. And his, uh, great father sent the family down to Midland, Texas. So they went inside to eat some chips, uh, kick back and relax. Brad turned on the radio and, and they're listening to Christian music. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. 5 p.m. Betsy is in the kitchen working with the cook to make chili dogs. Uh, with the chili that Kyle bought in from Texas. Kyle approached her. Hey, Mama. Hey, Mama. When is JR coming home for dinner? Kyle, please, Madison said. And 
Betsy says he's going to be out with friends tonight. Blockhead Oaf should be home having dinner with his family, Kyle demanded. Just then, Mike Fields walked into in. No, just then, little little Andrew walks into, and and she says, he says, "Mama, I hold you." And Kyle says, "Learn to say it properly, Andrew." I'll get to the point. Which. She's not going to hold you until you do. And Jim says, Give it a rest, Kyle. You want to wear welcome? You're welcome. You'll do it quick. Okay, so now both Jim and Kyle. Well, here, here we go. Here we go. Oh no, not this again. We don't, I don't have it. We had to deal with this a couple of weeks ago. I'll be damned if we have to to deal with this again. Bessie yells and, and she she leaves she leaves the room crying. So yeah, Betsy and I mean no Kyle and Jim get the double bell. Ding 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 Okay, seven uh, p.m. As the Hendrick family is having dinner, J.R. and his friends are having a Bible study at the house of Dr. Michelle. And Brad turns the subject to, you know, the first hour is this, uh, the whole Bible study is called in time two. One is about drug addiction and one is about new age. 7.35 p.m. After the first episode um, that dealt with drug issues, it got real quiet. And then Gerald started talking. I, I feel so sad. I just got a confession. For almost a month, I started smoking pot with Charlie nation and then one day he wasted with some kind of laced it with some kind of blue opium and almost died and and Brad says oh no JR it was all so stupid I was so angry and sad Angry at God because my grandma is dying. Angry at my daddy. So over Karen's objections, Dr. Michelle urges her husband uh, to join her and Brad to lay hands on Jr. and pray over him. Okay, 9.30 p.m. Brad's car pulls up in front of 14 Heritage Gate. Gate. Thanks for for keep. Uh, thanks for keeping me, Gerald said. Well, you told me your mother said your K your KG brother was was coming. What was I supposed to do? Besides, Karen wanted you out of the house. So that you're not moping in the dust of your uh, of your parents. Okay, so Jr. walks into the front lounge to see his father watching uh, CBNC, and Jim turns uh, around uh, for a look at him. As he sits down, hey, King, Jim says, and, and he says, his laundry on his face, CEO, the big chief, 
Hey, you can go with that board meeting like a like an animal boy. You should be real proud of yourself. Because that was the real man in there. That makes you the son after my own heart. Calls us. Well, how will there, Junior? You think you're too good? Uh. To be on management with your family this evening? Kyle said. Cowboy, go get yourself a beer. Whatever, just don't. Just don't interfere with my vibe. I'm smoking some bud in here. And JR, you really do know how to shine. And Jim and Betsy walks into the front lounge and she says, Honey, give me some. And Kyle says, And counting. Crazy little brother, little crazy little idiot brother. How are they with this? Sprinting all those gears before I became a teenager. You called me little brother. And then there I was. You went away to Austin, DC. You make you make me look so big, Kara. Not so big, man. Oh, honey, try, Kyle, honey, try to be a bit more positive. I mean, come on. Your father, your father paid for this nice mansion. That you get to stay in for a few days. He works actively enough. Working his butt off. And I'm so proud of him. Betsy wants to sit down and talk with me. Jim T's. And Madison says, Betsy, Miss Betsy, would you do the honors and tuck the kids in tonight? And Betsy says, and, uh, Good night. Good night, Tim. I'll be back. I promise. Betsy says, Okay, so Betsy and Madison go up the stairs together. Okay, and so Olympion. Jim is in the front lounge watching Two Gun Law. Kara's gotten uh, so cute because of Kyle. Uh, he remembers, uh, 
Come on, uh, Betsy. Um, so she's thanking him for getting in control of the company. So he goes into the mansion uh, snack lounge, used occasionally by uh, members of the family and some guests. He gets some Twix and uh, some some Reese's peanut butter cups, and then he we. Taking his well laptop, he walks in the front lounge. And Gerald says, Daddy, can we talk? Sure thing, boy. Come sit down beside me. It's as long as it's not to complain. What about Kyle's done? Do you think we're like the Kennedys? Uh, in the south. Son, that dopey wants to flick your mind. Joe Kennedy invested in Hollywood. I invested in in Music Row. Joe and Earl's Kennedy hardly, Kennedy hardly spent time together. At least me and your mama do that. Joe Kennedy was a die-hard socialist Democrat, boy. I was conservative, conservative Democrat. Now I'm just plain conservative. Okay, so this is where it, the interesting parts get. Uh, we're going to May the 26th, 5.35 a.m. Jim is working out in the basement gym at 14 Heritage Gate. He had been bench pressing for about 30 minutes, but now he's, on, he's running on a treadmill, and he's listening to the Beatles album, Abbey Road. 6.30 a.m., the family sits down for breakfast, boiled eggs, bacon, uh, uh, Madison makes a hash brown casserole. Okay, Daddy, we have an announcement. Tell it, Madison, Kyle said. And Madison says, Kyle and I are having another baby, Madison says. And so, so Jim says, well, that's terrific, another kid living on Swainfield. He said, now... If we, if we could just get J.R. to get out of college and now get 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 kids, wife of his own, Jim said. Wouldn't you be proud, J.R.? J.R. groaned. I always wanted kids. And I had one chance at that. I blew it. Speaking of which, son, Holly Hawthorne stopped by my office. He said, I think you got a you getting back early, you're good. And Grandma Elizabeth spoke so she's over my dead body, Jim. She's real high society. High society girl from Austin. So 
Seriously. And Cal says, Now that's the most protected key six flags in, on, uh, in, in America. I know JR just thinks well, not for the pig pods. What a sissy. I'm going to call Brad. I'm going to have breakfast with him. I can't believe it's in, sending into an argument, Jared said. So he he runs out. Okay, let's give both Jim and no, uh, well, Kyle of Jack. So we'll just give Jim the bell. Ding 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 ding. There we go. Okay, seven a.m. Jr. is having blueberry muffins with Brad in his apartment, and Brad's like, "Man, I'm sorry." I wish I could relate, but Tad has been dead for nine years now, Brad said. Every time Kyle uh, gets something, does something, Daddy goes crazy. Well, he's having him on the takeover, but now he gets another grandchild, and he makes me feel all oh, like odd man out. You're always welcome with me, Jr. But now I have a lunch date and a dinner date with Marissa tonight, so try to understand. Okay, so this is the 26th of May. I'm neglected to say that. Okay, let me say that. And then Jerry says, don't worry about me. Mama says that Kyle is uh, heading for this water park at 9 this morning. She's going to be there. I'll be ready to go back to the the house and face face daddy. You're good. At, you're good at politics, here. Just ignore Kyle and try hard not to uh, focus on what your dad wants and go after what you want. That's a good idea. You know your dreams and everything. So he gets back at eight fifteen. And Betsy walks into Jarrah's office. Jarrah, Kyle did the right thing for the wrong reasons. And and Jarrah says, I, I know, but you always uh, stick up for him, Mama. And then he breaks your heart. Mm. And does something stupid. And runs off. And then a holiday comes. And then you take him back again. And she says. Now listen. I'm taking the rest of the family. To a water park. Your daddy and grandma. Is not coming. So. Um, like you. They want the theme park. So. All right, don't go out with Holly Hawthorne if Karen makes you happy. Stick with Karen. I love your daddy. But sometimes he can be such a, a spoiler. You used to be like that until your granddad took you and refined you. Okay, so it's 9 a.m., and Jim summons Jared to his office, and they're working on that business proof blueprint that he promised Betsy. So it's 1 p.m., Kyle and the rest of the family, they return back, and stay behind. Madison takes the kids, little kids, 
for it now. And she goes into Bessie's office. Um, and she's bearing the soul. And she says, A few weeks ago, on a Saturday, I figured that Kyle would come uh, see me around to lunchtime after he finished his chores. We see, you see, we have some other uh, business interests going on, and uh, I need him to help, so I called him. His cell phone wasn't, uh, went straight to voicemail. Well, I got curious. And kicked and found him in the bunk house in bed. Uh, one of the ranch hands, another man, Madison said. Oh no. Bessie says. I told him if he ever tried that on me again, I would leave him. That he should be in touch with me about what's going on on a Saturday when he usually does most of his chores around the ranch in the morning so we can be together as a family. 2 p.m. JR is in the front lounge when he hears a familiar voice. I need to speak to J.R. Hendrick. And it's Kevin McDonald. And JR's like, like, Kevin! I was wondering you show up. You know, you see, I thought your flight was coming in 11. And Kevin says, Yes, it was. But I had to find my way to, uh, uh, purchase me a little uh, loaner car while I'm here over the summer. And yeah. Remember you told me a couple months ago that you were coming. Uh, Daddy said up, I said, sweet, come on upstairs. Your room's right next to mine. Okay, so it's 2 p.m. Um, Jim is in the mansion front lounge watching Gunsmoke. With his leave of absence, he had been taking a break from the news. Except for the news uh, being fed to him by his best friend Claude, who he feels like is ignoring him once again, and he's perturbed that his family is spending time at this water park. And tomorrow they were going to Six Flags. So he remembers his promise. Take JR to shop for a briefcase. Okay, so now it's 6 20 p.m. The family came back from the water park to wash up, get ready for dinner at 7 o'clock. Dinner with meatloaf, uh... Oh. Hold on. Okay, that was a loud bell for what's about to happen. So dinner with meatloaf, fried potatoes, broccoli, and macaroni and cheese. Jar is in his room talking to Kevin McDonald. Don't be so hard on your brother, Jr. You only get one family, Kyle says. And Jr.'s like, you're damn lucky to have a, a close knit family. We used to have that. 
Ben Daddy started uh, starts chasing power. Games in BC. And and Cal went a little wild. I got it with all kind. I get to deal with all kinds of crap. When I come home uh, for a ranch for a week. We're only against him blaring his loud music. Coming in late, picking on Christine. He don't know how to speak, be respectful. But it was only when Daddy came home. And Kevin says, You think I approve of that? Well, my parents do. They don't even call me Kevin. My first name is Vincent. 7.10 p.m. And this is where the gloves come off. Yeah, they've been a peaceful dinner so far about, about 10 minutes. And the conversation started this way. You know, it's just a point that, you know, the cows are to, to give you yourself. So, so, Betsy says, well, it's good for us all uh, can have dinner together as a as a family, for a change, Bessie says. And Christine says, I think we can all agree with that. You know, JR should uh, bring Kevin to the ranch sometimes. Um, I remember those days when it was just JR, uh, Kevin, and Ken. Unlike his other weird old friends, Kyle said. And Jim says, you cool it, boy. And Bobby says, let's please keep it peaceful. Okay? Bobby says. And and Gerald's like, that I agree, Bobby. That I agree. Mama Kevin told me about this uh, little political party. Among Federalists. I'm going to be leaving. Shortly. Oh. Here we go again. Jared ducking from. Some family time. Bobby told me at the. Water park. He wants to look baseball again. And Betsy's like. Cow please. That's enough. Madison says. And Gary says, I'm sorry, Madison. You don't need to correct Kyle. Here we go again. Gary's saying, little brother. Like back when we were kids. I'm in the dirt on you as it is, buddy, Kyle says. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry that two years ago, Madison, that I said I hated you. I believe, and believe it or not, I have come to appreciate you. You're becoming an admirable wife to my crazy brother. That's enough now, JR, Jim says. And JR says, You know, Daddy, I always hear you complain to your friends on the telephone that Kyle. 
is the man. And I don't stand up enough to you. Well, let me tell you something. This family is like a good gentleman married to a true lady. Can be quiet, Bessie says. I need to let you pick on me, Kyle. I used to let you pick on me, Kyle. But no more. Well, we all cut it out, Jim says. Thanks, Daddy. Go ahead and let him go. Baby Hop and his little Mercedes go down to some stupid little rally. In fact, you said that he was a... a damn good politician. You could trust, Daddy. Kyle said. Hold on a minute, Kevin says. What? Kyle said. Just take it easy. What for? You want me to lay off your roommate just because he's blind? It's supposed to be a quiet family dinner. I warned you, Kevin. Gerald said, Oh my god, everybody who gets friends with JR thinks he's so wonderful. Back when we were kids, maybe. Big man on campus studying public affairs. But you know all about that. What do you know about public affairs? J.R.S. his brother. <sighs> yeah. He gets all those... <sighs> fancy internships. Get to travel. All over the country. Sissy. Even had daddy... Take over a company for him. Now, Kyle, that's enough, Jim said. No, it's not. He has to be shuffled around like a perfect little baby. So, this is okay. This is where alarm bells going off for Jim and and uh Cal. Ding 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 ding. So Jared was in his in face his brother. Shut your mouth the hell out of here. Mama, Daddy, it's been good. But that rally is in thirty minutes. And we must be gone. He turns to his cousins. I'm sorry, Bobby. And Kevin, I'm sorry too. But I gotta get out of here. That's kind of a sad moment. All because his brother just kept egging it on. Okay, so it's 8 p.m. It's a star studied Federalist dinner hosted by the Red Scouts of America. Uh, before the first speech, which was Congressman Bill Hume, uh, there was some dialogue going between J.R., Bill Hume, Kevin, and the new friend of J.R., he would meet that, that David Ormsby boy. So, Jr., when is your daddy going to get out of his head? 
Bill Hume said. He was a damn fool pursuing that Clinton appointment. Man, go easy on him, David said. There ain't no easy on me, Jared said. Now, his cousin Amy Kathleen, I'm interested in her, Kim said. Take a number, Bill said. Plenty of guys in mind for her. And the other, and the announcer says, and now, our featured speaker, Congressman Bill Hume. And so people are spelled down the speech, but the one thing Jared's got his eyes on is, is Amber. Because Amber would be a standby that summer whenever he and Karen were having problems. 9.30 p.m., Jr. is in the kitchen uh, with, with whiskey sours. And you know, Jim's both angry at uh, both Betsy and Kyle. Uh, Claude is in the kitchen crushing beer cans. Okay, let me see if I can find this this conversation. I'm not sure. Well, about damn time you showed up, boy. Hey, what the hell's wrong with you? Hey, you know Mama don't like your drinking whiskey. Whiskey sours, boys. Sit down. No, Daddy, I think I'm sitting up because I have a feeling you, you're going to jump on my cake or something again. <sighs> Bad enough that you ruined dinner. <sighs> Your mama ran up, he ran upstairs all upset because what you, what you and Kyle did, it's nothing good. <sighs> then, you have a couple of owners to show up late. What the hell, boy? You too good to be around the family? You know, Daddy, had it. You said you wanted me to stand up to you. I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't like it how you and Mama sit there and, and <coughs> enable Kyle. And just keep it going. Just keep egging it on. You know how bad that pisses me off, Daddy? <coughs> Boy, you may be 25 years old, but don't you talk back to me. You know how bad that makes me feel? Seriously. I built you a company. No, Daddy. That was my granddad's idea. All right? Tell me this then, boy. Wasn't it my side that was able to come up with half of it? May have been your side that come up with half of it, Daddy. Just proves you're wrong all along. Grandpa Hendrick wasn't a coward, number one. Number two, I want you to think about it. Mama's side of the family came up with the other half. All right? You wanna, you wanna go ahead and just pick a fight? Pick a fight. But you're gonna make me even madder. Boy, I said, shut your mouth. Don't talk back talk me there, boy. This is my house. And this is my damn right to say whatever I please. You know, Daddy? I don't know what the hell your problem is. We could have had a peaceful dinner if Kyle hadn't opened his mouth. If you hadn't kept it going. No, Daddy, he egged it on. You know what? Maybe Grandma and Granddad's driving at you. You let the power get to your head, like I always do. What's that mean? It means I'm going up to my room. Good night, Daddy. Okay, so 
now here we go. Whew. And see, one thing that is not part of that scene is that later on, Betsy never heard. And they had argument. Jay, I want you to do the, the well, we'll do, I'll do the insights. The next two days passed by quietly. Uh, Jim took most of the family to Six Flags America. Jerry and Kevin went to the Red Scouts uh, rally uh, at Emmanuel Church in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, Betsy took the family to church. Uh, Jerry goes to church with Karen. Okay, so it's 1 a.m., Uh, J.R. has, um, has a flashback dream. It's March 29, um, 1987. Let me see if I can find, yeah, here it is, the, the flashback dream. 